It should be no surprise, but GameStop sales over the last couple of years have been declining thanks to the uh, increase in popularity of digital distribution. Now, honestly, I still think that we're years away before digital distribution finally takes over the whole gaming uh, industry and finally is the only way to buy games. I still think that we're years away from that, but that should still worry GameStop because GameStop is really hurting right now. We all know that the writing is on the wall for GameStop. GameStop is going to close whether it be this year next year or the year after we all know GameStop is going to actually close and even if physical media still is is around years uh, in years in the future it's just not good news for GameStop a lot of people are buying more digital content and even if people are buying physical media it's just not good for GameStop why because as we know at least for a day one releases there's a lot of other ways to buy it it's a shame that GameStop doesn't do anything to help the consumer when it comes to day one releases. You can go to Amazon Prime and you can go to this Best Buy Gamers uh, Club and you can actually buy games at a discount on day one. So you can literally get like a copy of the new Super Mario Odyssey uh, right now or the Assassin's Creed Origin for about like $40 right now if you go to other places than GameStop. But let's be honest, the whole new sales for GameStop has never been their priority. They make most of their money off the physical, off the, uh, pre-owned stuff. The pre-owned stuff is where they really uh, get most of their money. But but uh, honestly, it's just getting really worse for GameStop. And GameStop has been, like, recently been super desperate for ways to make money. If you didn't know, in the last, like, couple of years, they did recently buy out a company online, an online retailer called ThinkGeek. ThinkGeek is a company that sells geeky merchandise. So they sell, like, gaming memorabilia. They sell, like, movie memorabilia. They just sell really geeky stuff that's really geeky. And you can see that it really taught, really fits in with the whole gaming industry and the whole gaming thing for GameStop because GameStop is a gaming retailer so it would make sense that they would buy this company called ThinkGeek it just fits their whole motif and fits their whole business model right there but it gets worse than them just buying ThinkGeek before you would go online and buy products from this from their uh, company called ThinkGeek that they had bought out but now you can actually buy ThinkGeek products in store that is right they actually moved a lot of the ThinkGeek products inside uh, GameStop retail stores. So when you go into a GameStop retail store, you now see more products than just gaming products. It used to only be like games, hardware, uh, consoles, accessories, and things like that at the GameStops. But now you're seeing a lot of products by ThinkGeek in the actual GameStops. That's just GameStop's attempt to try to get as much money as possible because if they don't do other things than just sell games, they're going to be out of luck. And then if you go back about, I think, four or five years ago, they also started uh, having electronics in the store, whether that be smartphones, tablets, MP3 players. You can see that GameStop is super desperate for money. You can see like maybe 10 years ago or even like eight years ago, GameStop didn't do all this stuff that they're pulling right now. They didn't sell MP3 players, electronics. They didn't sell ThinkGeek items inside the store. They mainly just sell gaming accessories, game consoles, and games because they didn't need any other way to try to get money for their company. The gaming stuff was actually working out for GameStop, but now it's not. And what I want to talk about in this video is they're actually going to be having another program to try to attempt to get more money because they are super desperate for money right now. They need as much money as they can get because they don't want to close up. Now, there has been this image floating around the internet in the last couple of days. It's actually was spotted in one of the recent Game Informers that's coming out next month. If you don't know what Game Informer is, Game Informer is a it's a magazine tailored towards gamers. It tells all the gaming news, but it is brought to you by GameStop. It is by GameStop, so there's going to be a lot of GameStop stuff inside those uh, Game Informer magazines. And apparently GameStop is going to be doing a whole new uh, program to try to get more money out of the consumers. What am I talking about? Well, right now, instead of just doing everything that they're currently doing, like right now, you can only buy games from GameStop. But they're going to be uh, trying this new program coming, I think, around... Uh, Black Friday, so next month in November, they're going to be doing this new program that's going to allow you to rent games from GameStop. That is right. You're going to be able to rent games from GameStop. Now, renting games in 2017 is still a thing, actually, believe it or not. We still have Gamefly, which is an online distributor of games where you can rent games through the mail. And then we also have Redbox. You can still go to Redbox. And there's probably some other retailers that still do let you rent games physically and take them home and rent them. So there's other ways to rent games. But now GameStop is trying to jump on 
the renting bandwagon because they don't really have any other choice and they're really pretty much out of options. So how is this new renting program going to work for GameStop and how is it going to work for the consumers? Let me explain about this whole the GameStop renting program. So it's going to be $60 for half a year. So you're going to pay initially upfront $60. So the same price as a brand new video game. And then uh, on top of that, you're going to have to be a pro member. So tack on $15 on top of that price to be to do this program so sixty dollars plus fifteen for half a year you can calculate what that's going to be and that's going to allow you to pretty much take home any pre-owned game and play as much as you want and then of course you can swap them in and out by going down to your local uh, GameStop now I'm not sure if the program is going to work with any of their online games because they do uh, have retro video games online and they have some other games online on their actual GameStop website I don't think it's like that I think it's only going to be at their uh, retail stores you can walk in and get stuff off the wall and honestly, I just don't think this is uh, too good for GameStop. Alongside you taking home and renting these games for half a year for $60 plus the pro member uh, membership being $15, at the end of the uh, half a year, you will be able to uh, take home one game for you to keep forever after the whole half a year. So say, for instance, uh, at the end of the year, into the half of the year of your membership, your membership expires, I can take home, like, for instance, the newly released Super Mario Odyssey, and I get to keep that forever. And every, uh, so basically every six months, you get to keep a game for yourself. Honestly, I don't think this is too bad of a deal, but I think it's bad for GameStop. Let me explain. I'm not just hating on GameStop or anything like that. I'm going to explain why this may be a bad idea for GameStop. So as we all know, most of the ad revenue or most of the revenue, not ad revenue, excuse me, most of the revenue that GameStop does get is going to be from pre-owned media. That is right. Most of the sales they get are going to be from pre-owned. They do make sales from new merchandise, whether that be a new day one release, a new console, accessories, uh, merchandise, etc. But most of their uh, most of their money does come from pre-owned items. So for instance, if a lot of people are jumping on the bandwagon to this rental service that GameStop is doing, and a lot of people are renting these games, when I walk into a GameStop, for instance, I want to buy Super Mario Odyssey. So I'm like, you got a pre-owned copy of Super Mario Odyssey? Be like, nope, I don't have a pre-owned uh, I don't have a pre-owned copy of Super Mario Odyssey, and that's not going to be good because I'm not going to wait around and try to see if they have uh, uh, Super Mario Odyssey. I'm going to be going to go somewhere else and buy a copy of Super Mario Odyssey. I'm not going to wait for them to say if they have any pre-owned copies in store if I didn't buy my copy on day one. That's not good news. And this even gets worse because, as you know, current-gen games or modern games depreciate in value really quickly, aside from Nintendo, of course. And that's not good news because by the time someone actually brings back their game, if they've been playing it for, let's say, a week, they bring back their copy of Assassin's Creed Origin or whatever the case may be, they bring back the game, it's going to depreciate in value really quickly. And then when someone goes to buy a pre-owned copy of the game, it's going to be lower than what they originally uh originally wanted it for and they're going to lose money just because it lost money so that so basically what i'm saying is the time that the game was rented is is a lot of time the game is going to be going down in value and when they return the game the game's going to be they're going to lose like four or five six they're going to lose money basically is what i'm saying so i just don't think this is a good idea for gamestop and if a lot of people jump on the bandwagon it's even going to make it worse for gamestop because what happens when everyone plays these games if they're a member of this uh, of this program they're not going to want to buy copies of the game anymore let's just be honest once they beat the game am i really going to want to buy like super mario odyssey if i'm part of that program and i return the game i'm not going to buy the game because i already beat the game most likely so why would i buy the game and if all these pre-owned stuff are just sitting around the store this is not going to be good news and the people who are buying the pre-owned stuff GameStop is going to be taking a loss just because a lot of people are going to be renting these games out and they're going to be depreciating in value just because they'll probably get them back a week or two later after they're done and it did state that they are going to allow to keep these games as long as they want suckers <laughs> this is not good news because I can literally keep this thing for like months and months and months or weeks and weeks and weeks and you all know some people are lazy too they won't bring back the game for like literally months and be like Hmm, it's time for me to bring back this uh, game. Let's bring it back. And then by then, when they try to resell it, it would be so low in value or everyone would have already played the game by then. There's really no point. And, uh, yeah, I don't think it's going to work out for GameStop. I think it might actually be a fairly good uh, uh, price for this whole uh for this whole membership, sixty dollars for half a year plus the fifteen dollar membership, and you get a and you get to keep a game after you're done with your membership time. I think it might actually beat out some of the other options. Now, I really haven't looked at the GameFly or Redbox, but I think this might be a very good deal for the consumer. But for the uh, company itself, I just don't think this is good for GameStop. I think this is GameStop's last dis last ditched effort to try to get as much. Uh, 
uh, revenue going in their uh, company. I just think GameStop is pretty much going to fail at this point. I'm sorry to say it. So in the future, when GameStop sells, be warned. I told you guys, GameStop was most likely going to fail. Anyway, guys, this is Wayne from My Tech News signing out.